Hello world, this is Dan from Mobile and today I'm going to translate Alex's tutorial on how to create an app using the Mobile Connect platform. We're going to create a simple chat application and for our host we're going to be using the Flash ActionScript 3 API and for our controller app we'll use the JavaScript API to create a simple web app that any smartphone can access. So the first thing we want to do is go to connect.mobile.com uh, where we'll have access to a lot of documentation and you'll also be able to download the specific APIs that we'll be using. In this case the JavaScript and AS3 API. So let's go into our dashboard, create an app, name our app, and we will get a specific app key. Go ahead and copy this app key. This app key is important. Uh, it's what's going to allow us to communicate within the host and the controller app. So we'll be using this within both of the APIs. So let's go ahead and fire up Flash. Um, it's very simple in here. We have three different text boxes. One for displaying the chat, the user list, and the TV code. The TV code will be the same as the room ID, which is what we will use to connect the controllers with. First thing we need to do is go into our action script settings and we add the SWC file uh, from our API that we downloaded. So there we go. And now we're going to go into our Flash Builder project and do the same thing. So we'll go into our properties. find the SWC API file and we're good to go. So it's a very simple project. We have one class, the host class, which is linked to our Flash project. Uh, within that, we import all the mobile connect services that we're going to be using. We're also going to create a variable client which is going to handle everything that we do with Mobile Connect. Uh, we only need one class for this. And then we establish our public variables which are simply our UI within our project. So three text fields and two scroll bars. So we're going to create a new instance of the Mobile Connect variable and we're going to name it client. And in here is where we need the app key that we created at Mobile Connect. So let's go grab that now. And we paste it in there. So we're set. So within this client variable, we're going to define all the event listeners that we need to maintain our communication um, within the host and controller. So in this case, it's on create room, on user joined, on user left and on message. So now we're ready to create our room. So we create room as host and we name it whatever we want. In this case host TV. Um, we're only going to be using one but it's important to note that our platform supports more than one host. In this case we'll just use host TV. So when we create this room as a host uh, we trigger the event on create room and on create room in the platform will generate and assign a TV code for us or a room ID. So this will also trigger this function uh, and this function will give us a result and the result is the result of the on create room. Um, with this we will know if we'll have either a positive result or an error. If the connection went well, uh, the is OK function will run. If not, you will uh, create an error. And this is something that you always have to do. You have to test the connection to see if everything is working fine. So if the result is OK, the first thing we want to do is assign the git code to the text field where we want to display it. And this is how the controllers will be able to communicate with that. So we want to add that into the TV code down here. Um, now let's test that out to see if our project is on the, on the right path. 
And there we go. So we are communicating with the Mobile Connect platform, and we know that because we generated a six-digit code, which is what the Mobile Connect platform outputs. Otherwise, it would have gone to the error message. So let's go back now. So if we mess that up, the output on that text box would have been our error, and you can see that here. Uh, so let's go. Let's move on. Let's configure the on user join, which is what will be triggered when a user connects. So let's go ahead and bring that user's info, and that's with the data user event trigger. So once a user is connected, uh, we're going to insert in the conversation that it, that user has entered the room um, with the with his name. And we're also going to update the user list to display that any user has joined. When I insert the conversation, it's uh, very simple what's going on. Simply gathering the time and displaying the time along with the message. In this case, the message is that the user has, has connected. Um, it can be a new message, which we'll see later. Our update user list function is very simple. Um, we're going to go through all the connected users and output them in a user list. So we'll get the user list out of client.getroom.getcontrollers.getuserList. This is given to us in a vector, so all we have to do is uh, go through that list and add each individual user to the list, which will be displayed in the text field. This is pretty simple. What we do is we go into the user list, find the length, and we create a variable for each of those users, um, get name, and put it in the text field. And then we also have to update the user scroll bar to reflect the UI of our flash. These are the two functions that we need to display that within the UI. On user left is very similar to on user join. Um, we also obtain the information about the user that is leaving and we update the conversation to reflect that he has left, so another string there. And we update the user list. For the on message function, we have three different variables that come from the event, and those three different variables are message ID, message data, and sender. In the message ID, we can see if it is a public message or a private message. This can help us differentiate whether we want to display it in the chat conversation or if we want to do something else with it. The message data, which is an object, gives, gives us the details of what was sent, and the sender simply tells us the user that sent it. Uh, basically, what we're doing here is we're seeing if it is a public chat, and then we're inserting in the conversation with the specific details. That's it for the action script side of things. It's very simple, very straightforward. Um, and now let's go back and we'll get started with the JavaScript stuff. Let's go ahead and open up the controller side of things. It's a very simple HTML file. Within this HTML file, we want to insert two JavaScript files. Um, the first one is the mobile connect file that you can download at connect.mobile.com. And the second one is a client file, which is where all the logic for the chat will happen. We'll get into that. The idea you want to focus on is making sure that most of the logic occurs on the TV side of things or the host side of things. And the controller is simply sending messages. For the UI side of things, we have a few divs. In the first div, we have two forms for the user to input his information, his name and the TV code. And this is the initial div where the user will log in. The second div is very straightforward as well. Just an HTML text area where the user will input his message and be able to send it to the TV code that he has been connected to. And over here we can control which div is showing or which one is hiding depending on the case. In this case we want to show the message one once we are connected. Let's go ahead and open up the client.js. This JavaScript file is very short, very simple. 
Um, to begin, we're going to enter the app key, same app key that we use for the host device. So let's, let's go ahead and pull it from the website. Or if you have it stored, you can just paste it right in. As variables, we have a room ID, a client, and a user. Once again, we have a created client function. This is the same one that we use in ActionScript. So we create a new instance of Mobile Connect and we give it the app key. Now, like in ActionScript, we're going to add an event listener that's going to listen to when a new user joins the room. I'm only going to use the on join room. I could be using all of them though. But for this example, we'll keep it simple and just stick to on join room. So this is only going to be triggered once we have a user that is connected. So from the join room, uh, we're going to get a room ID, a user, both of which we are obtaining from the text boxes that we created earlier. So now we're going to join room as controller, and with that message, we're going to send the different parameters that we just obtained to connect. Once we connect, the on join room is going to trigger this function right here, um, where we'll have to get a variable. Same thing we did in Action Script 3. So we'll do it again, and we'll make sure that everything is OK. If everything is OK, we will display the TV code in the UI and we will change the divs to show the messages instead of the join table which is the div where you enter the information to connect in the beginning. If something went wrong and the result is not okay then we're gonna display a message that says join failed. Now we create the send message function and this is the one that we'll use to send a message to the host or our flash and we'll take the input from the text box and we'll make sure to send to all to the public chat which is the same public chat that we had over here um, yep here it is so same public chat this is how we identify that the message will be displayed to everybody we also have the logout function we call the client to leave room and we change the div so they can join again if they want to. And that is it for the controller. Uh, now let's go make sure the controller is working. So we'll go to our HTML file and launch it in a browser. Let's go ahead and resize this thing so we can test both the controller and the host at the same time. So we'll pull up the flash and see if everything is working. The controller we just made um, was made with all smartphones in mind, so any smartphone with a web browser can play with it. Alright, so let's go ahead and launch the Flash, and we see immediately we get a TV code, so good sign there. And we'll bring up the controller. Let's go ahead and log in here. See how fast this works. And we're in you see our automatic message comes up and our users in the list you also see the timestamp now let's send a few messages just to test this thing see how it works looking good alright but to really test this thing let's get another user in on there so let's open up another web browser or another window and we'll log in as a second user to simulate two different smartphones or tablets. Remember the idea here is that uh, both of these users are connecting to the same screen so uh, both of these guys will have the same TV code to enter in. We'll go ahead and send a message from our second user everything working. You see both users in the list and what we just did is we closed the browser window which immediately logged them out and you see the user is no longer in the list. We got that message that we had programmed. And that was mobile's first tutorial. Remember you can find all source files and everything you need at connect.mobile.com. Uh, we look forward to seeing what you can do with our platform.